talking to you guys today about Dictyosphaeria. So this is the taxonomy of Dictyosphaeria in the Kingdom Plantae, Phylum Chlorophyta, class of the Obophyceae, Order Cadoferales, family Saponicolaceae, and genus Dictyosphaeria. And there are 11 different species. In Hawaii, we have two species, Dictyosphaeria cavernosa, which is pictured there, and Dictyosphaeria versusca. So Dictyosphaeria is a multicellular, multinucleate uh, organism. It has endogenous segregative cell division, so it's this bubble algae, and you'll see that really easily when you look at the plant itself. The thallus is pseudoparenchyma, so there's no true parenchyma, but it's an interwoven little mesh. And it has sporokinosis with alternation of generations. So Dictyosphaeria prosthesiae is the green bubble algae. It's like little itty bitty buttons you find on the benches all over Hawaii. And it can be found in these rocky intertidal zones and all the way up to 76 meters at depth. So Dictyosphaeria cavernosa is more commonly seen. A lot of you guys have that in your herbariums. And it's called lingu poha poha. So poha poha means to like burst. So when you pick it up, you can burst it in your hands or if you step on it, you would burst. And it wasn't really eaten in Hawaiian culture, but it had a name because when you stepped on it, it was very noticeable. And so it's kind of hollow and cup like. You can see there's little holes in it, and it looks like sheets. It covers in large mats, so when you were out in the field, you must have seen these like big fields of it. And it's known for competition with coral. So it's been defined as an invasive native. So it, although it is a native species, it has invasive tendencies. Over there, uh, the, the Dictyosphere cabinosa is fighting a Phytus compressa. So you can see that big mat of green is all just the alga itself. And so Pariohe Bay was a big place for study of the Dictyosphere cabinosa because it has been taken with the corals for the last 30 ish years. And after a big heavy rainfall, like the ones we just had, there was a big decrease in the species. So they can take the nutrients and store it in those chambers. So they survive when there's a lot of runoff. But when there's a lot of the fresh water in, that runoff gets washed away. So here's a really great example of its competition with the corals. It just grows perfectly right in between them. Another cool little creature is the sacroglossin. It's a little sea slug that eats the chloroplasts. And I thought it was a pretty cute little guy. He's heavily studied the Mediterranean, and he loves the cavernous set. And those are my citations.